joining us for another week of the Cybersecurity Whisperer for the week of April 7th. Uh, we didn't have an episode last week, so I hope everyone had a fantastic uh, Easter holiday. And certainly by missing last week, we have a lot to talk about, so let's dive right in. Uh, I am sure you have all heard and now are very familiar with the um, the backdoor in XZ Utilities. You know, last Friday, this lone Microsoft developer, you know, he rocked the world when he revealed this backdoor had been intentionally planted in XZ Utils. And if you're not familiar with that, it's okay. It's an open source data compression utility, and it's on almost all flavors of Linux. And the person or persons behind this project likely have split years working on this. They were likely close to seeing this backdoor update merged into Debian and Red Hat, the two biggest distro, distros of Linux. And uh, this software developer at Microsoft spotted something that seemed out of the ordinary. But again, XE Utils, it's, it's ubiquitous in Linux, uh, and, and it provides lossless data compression, uh, which is critical for, you know, for compressing and decompressing data during all types of operations that are used. And so Andres Friend, this developer and engineer that was working on Microsoft's Postgres uh, SQL uh, product, he was troubleshooting some performance issues that a Debian system was having with SSH. Um, of course, you know, you're familiar with SSH being used for remote logging or rem remotely logging into devices and that these SSH logins were consuming too many CPU cycles and they were generating errors. And so through his, you know, certainly his careful eye, he discovered the problems were the result of some updates that had uh, been made to XE Utils. And so last Friday, he took to open source security list to disclose uh, the updates were a result of someone intentionally planting a backdoor in this compression software. And so it's super hard to overstate the complexity and the inner workings of this backdoor and how this, if it would have been able to be pushed out to these two distros, would have dwarfed the 2020 SolarWinds hack um, backdoor. So just huge. And, 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 and to dive in a little further, this... You know, this allow this would allow someone that had the right private key to hijack your SSH daemon, and that's the executable file that is responsible for making these SSH connections. And from there, they would be able to execute these malicious commands. And and so, while you know this backdoor is implemented really through a five-stage loader, um, but it's a series of simple and clever techniques to hide itself. And so, therefore, it also provides the means for new payloads to be delivered without major changes being required. And this really teaches us that we, you know, should, you know, in all things in life, but um, you know, security analysts, security engineers, security hobbyists, that you should really follow your gut because to most people, you know, friends' observations, they hardly seem like red flags to most people, but they led, you know, this developer down a rabbit hole. And so he was pulling apart every piece of the code until he discovered this bad actor had really, you know, carefully inserted this back door again that would have allowed remote access to the world, you know, all the world's systems that use SSH. Um, and, and so, you know, all signs point to a user that uses the pseudonym uh, Gia Tan. And, and remember that open source software like XE Utils is primarily maintained by volunteer developers. And it takes a lot of work to become the person that actually gets to hit the publish button. And, and Tan had spent three years working alongside the, um, you know, the, the developer in the code. And, and, and this code is obfuscated and can only be found in the complete uh, downloaded package not in the Git distribution, and so which lacks the inform uh, macro, which triggers the backdoor build process. So if the malicious macro is present, the second stage artifacts found in the Git repository are injected during that build time. Um, the author, you know, again, this Gia Tan, also or Gia T75, reportedly also submitted code um, that may have specifically prevented the fuzzer from being able to detect the backdoor planted. So. It's unclear who this TAN really is, but cybersecurity experts, you know, have, you know, they are saying that because of the project's complex complexity, it probably is a group of hackers that are working for an extremely powerful group, or or even a nation state. Big picture, you know, it's it's sad that the fact that a handful of overworked volunteer developers are the only thing standing in the way of a potentially devastating attack on global cyber infrastructure, and it's obviously joked about, especially with giants like Microsoft that make billions off of uh, open source systems. So what should you look for? You know, if you're running XZUtils 5.60 or 5.61, it's 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 uh, recommended that you downgrade to an uncompromised version uh, such as 5.46 stable and hunt for any malicious activity that you might have. 
Also, last week, Saturday, you know, a lot of you may have received emails from AT&T. They notified 7.6 million customers that their account passcodes had been compromised and that they proactively reset them. They stated that their internal teams are working with external cyber experts to analyze the situation. And it appears that this data is more than four years old and it doesn't contain personal financial information or call history. Uh, and, and so the, the information really varies by customer and account, but... They say it may have included your full name, your email address, your mailing address, your phone number, your social security number, your date of birth, your AT&T account number, and your passcode. So it sounds like your entire customer record, and it wasn't encrypted or hashed. And as a result of this, um, they have been hit, as you could expect and would expect, with a class action lawsuit. The breach was a direct result. This is what the you know the claimants are saying. The breach was a direct result of AT&T's failure to implement adequate cybersecurity procedures. Again, very generic, but probably uh, truthful. Moving on to the what we always talk about from the social engineering side of things, and that if you want to, if the bad guys want to find that information on you, they're going to use every angle they can to get it. And so that we, we got some information this week about uh, one of the Chinese hacker groups, APT31, and how they, um, th that they target your home and your family you know, if they need to get information about you. It, it shouldn't be earth-shattering, but they, uh, they aggressively pursued you know, U.S. politicians, academia, you know, academic leaders, activists, and anyone that's critical of the PRC and their policies. And, and, and so it just lets you know that they, they bypass the, the enhanced security measures of these high-profile targets by focusing on the more vulnerable, their family members, that may not be, ha be as on guard or on edge. And so they might use some seemingly innocuous emails with tracing links, uh, and they can map out the digital footprint of the, of the relatives to gain you know, the crucial intel like location, your browser operating system, and network details. And this ultimately gave them the data they needed um, to, to, to have these direct and sophisticated attacks on your devices and your routers for even deeper network penetration. Uh, you know, something positive, we don't often cover things that are positive, but this week there was a report that Diligent and BitSight released that said shareholders win when their businesses do better at cyber. And so I've been saying this for a bit, but you know, security has long been seen as a cost center um, but but now, you know, the, the other side of the coin, and, and, and I certainly agree with this article, uh, I've been head of security for a startup that gets acquired and performs security for a company that's doing an IPO, part of the due diligence team that reviews a company's security posture even before we acquired them. And, uh, and addressing these cyber risks can actually move the financial needle in all these situations. Investing in, in cybersecurity, certainly it's an investment in your overall business health. And companies that have strong cyber defenses tend to outperform in the market, um, you know, reflecting the higher trust and stability of those companies. Uh, something not so positive, but again, you know, now I, I'm never surprised by, any, by anything that, that I read now from a hacking standpoint, but the bad guys, the criminals are actually weaponizing child abuse images to ban Discord servers. So if they if they find uh, a competitor potentially out on Discord, they'll join that Discord server, they'll upload some uh, some child sex abuse material, and uh, and then the, the automation from Discord will ban that, that group, uh, that server. And it's not the first time that we've seen this weaponization of automated content moderation techniques. So just a heads up there. And finally, well, you know, while we know Microsoft is a huge target, you know, one of the world's largest technology providers um, with the Azure and the 365, a report did come out on Wednesday of this week from the Cyber Review Board, which is a subsidiary of CISA, the Cybersecurity Infrastructure and Security Agency, that said the technology giant's corporate culture fell short on security investments and risk management and needs significant reforms. Uh, this is related to the, the, the nation-state attack, again, the state-linked hack that happened last year. This was you know, on the Microsoft Exchange online platform that led to the theft of about 60,000 U.S. State Department and emails, and they said that it was preventable and should never have occurred. Uh, they, they said there was a series of operational and strategic decisions by Microsoft that pointed to a corporate culture that really deprioritized investments in enterprise security and rigorous risk management. 
And so despite the central role the company plays in a larger technology you know, ecosystem, they still had this lack of security corporate culture. The, the report further urged Microsoft to publicly share its plans to make fundamental security-focused reforms across the company and its suite of products. And, the, and finally recommended that all cloud service providers and government partners enact security-focused changes. So again, nothing new but a very harsh report. They are a very large target, but they do need to take security more seriously. I've said for a long time, Microsoft is not a security company, but they're trying to be one in the market. So until next week, next week, I um, would urge you to put any comments and questions you have down below, like and subscribe, and also let me know if you're going to be going to any upcoming security conferences because we might see you there. Thanks.